この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りしますオーライディー、ウォーカムエブリワン、アイムティアブー、アイムヒアフォー、モーアワリモノガトリー、ウィアオンエピソード3 and 4, I believe is where the next arc ends, I'm not entirely sure, but just guessing that that's where it ends. If it, if it seems like it'll be three episodes, then it'll be three, four, five, whatever.、Uh, in any case, We are on the, the second little portion of Owari Monogatari, which came out swinging with a really interesting, really concise, really well themed, and, and kind of awesome、uh, two episode arc with a, a sort of a closed case, cold case, locked room, open and shut, but not really mystery、uh, coming from Araragi's past and heavily featuring one Oikura Sodachi,、uh, or how much. Who、uh, seems to be the focus of the next arc as well, which is cool and interesting and puts us in, in a slightly different position than we usually start Monogatari arcs because we actually have some kind of information, some kind of a starting point, which is Sodachi herself and probably conjecturing, probably Araragi trying to figure out how to like, live with her in the same school、um, and potentially trying to figure out what it is that, that like, That she holds against him.、Uh, we've, got, we've got a bit of information about her kind of interesting, sort of jealous, a little bit envious complex around Araragi and specifically his skills in math and her own desire to be called、uh, Euler and her holding that against him for being better than her at math.、Um, so we have a bit of a starting point, but not enough to really like. Form a serious conjecture about what might be the focus of the episode. Besides, yeah, it'll probably be featuring Sodachi heavily. I do know that the next arc title has her name in it, and I can see the first frame of the video, which I'm about to play, which has Sodachi Riddle. So, more mystery, more intrigue, more riddles. Cool, great. That's like my favorite thing in the world, and I'm very happy about that. Uh, before we go ahead and jump on into this episode, there is one other thing that I wanted to mention, and it will be in the form of something that I haven't done for a really, 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 really long time, which is a comment spotlight. And I want to do this just so that I can give you guys some context onto why I looked up a thing that I wanted to talk about regarding Sodachi. So, two comments that I want to spotlight really quickly. The first one coming from Mr. Reese28 or Riss28. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Not sure how you say it. But、uh, Mr. Riss28 writes Funny you say that Sodachi sounds like Senjo Gahara because Sodachi's voice actress first auditioned for the role of Senjo Gahara didn't get it and then they gave her Sodachi like many years later. Cool. Interesting. The second one that I wanted to spotlight is from Grumo57, who says, I suggest you pay close attention to Oikura's voice actor performance for the following arcs, as it is one of the best I have ever seen. Cool. So, after reading these two comments, I went, All right, interesting. So, who is this that's voicing Sodachi? And boy, oh boy, I was not disappointed by the list of things that this. This individual, this voice actress has,、uh, has voiced in. And I closed the. Shit. It's、um, Marina Inoue.、Uh, I actually just remembered that. Wow, cool. Good job, me. I think that's right. It might be Marika or something similar. I might have butchered it. I'm going to look it up and make sure I didn't butcher it. Hold on. <laughs> Sodachi. Wait. Oikura, my anime list. Because that way I just don't get spoiled on anything by clicking on this. And Marina Inoue. Oh my god, I nailed it. All right, cool.、Um, but because of those two comments, I decided to go and look that up and、uh, was not disappointed by some of the characters that this, char- this, this voice actress has voiced. The most notable and most recent that I've heard her、um, was as Kyoko. From Sangatsu no Lion, the, the very, very, very interesting and complex character who says a lot without saying very much,、um, partly through an incredible performance by Inoue san.、Uh, really a, a fantastic character, and there are some, some interesting parallels between her character there and what I would assume, given what I know about Oikura、uh, here. It's kind of cool. And.、Um, Definitely going to be keeping an eye out from that, for that. Some other notable, notable roles would be Momo from Hiroaka, a more standard role.、Uh, voice of Armin from, from uh, uh, 
uh, AOT from Attack on Titan, which is a very different role because uh, performing as like a child, a male child for a female voice actress means significantly changing your voice, but a highly emotive, highly emotional role in Armin, and also the voice of Yoko Littner from Gurren Lagann. So this is a voice actress that just popped onto my radar who I hadn't really thought about very much, and wow, going to be keeping an eye on her and looking out for that voice in the future. So thank you to Grumo and Mr. Reese for pointing out just like, hey, you should pay attention to this voice actress. She's pretty good because uh, yeah, yeah, she's she's pretty good. Um, the fact that she she auditioned for Senjo Gahara is is very interesting and it does. Well, it it makes me think of her as a little bit more. Mm, how do I put this? She she already strikes me as a very tsundere type archetype ar- ar- archetypal character. The way that she interacts with Araragi in the past and uh, seemingly the the setup for the future um, reminds me of that kind of a, an archetypal tsundere character. How we explore and perhaps uh, subvert that will be something that'll be on my mind as we move forward and maybe find out more about her. Um, but knowing that that Senjo is also a subversion of an archetypal tsundere type character um, makes that kind of line up and makes sense to me. It's yeah, that, that works in any case. That's, that's all of the stuff that I wanted to go through in the previous arc. We had some amazing themes and, and stuff around uh, uh, balance formulas, equations, mm, formulas, Ogi formula makes a lot of sense, but uh, I'm also going to be keeping an eye out for Anything that Ogi does or says that continues to lead me toward the conclusion that she is like the embodiment of the same darkness that took Hachikuji or forced Hachikuji to 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 move on from this plane of existence. And um, just going to be keeping an eye out for that. Just going to be thinking about that a little bit. And on just a more general note, the first two episodes of Owari were some of the strongest like most concise, most interesting uh, of Monogatari series, period. Um, And people have said in comments and elsewhere that this is just the beginning and that Owari contains some of their absolute favorite Monogatari moments. So I am super excited to get into more of it and find out what they mean by that. Uh, People told me very much the same thing when we got into second season, and now people are telling me, yeah, second season ain't nothing, just wait. So (laughs) all of that rolling around in my skull for now uh let's go ahead and focus our attention on this next arc and see what we've got to work with so i have episode three of awari monogatari up and ready to go Uh, i have not switched the subtitle track to cold girls which i should do and i have done and now it's up it's it's up it's ready to go there is a cool pattern here and it says chapter one and sodachi riddle and i'm not sure what else is there it looks like odd lacy patterns which is which is kind of cool um that's what we got that's what we're doing Let's go ahead and jump on into it. So as I said, I've got the episode up and ready to go. There will be two versions of this reaction video. As usual, you can find a picture-in-picture version with the video up there in the corner, down in the description, and a timer-based version up on YouTube. The picture-in-picture version, while it will have the video in it, will not have discussion at the end of each episode. The timer-based version on YouTube, while it will have discussion at the end of each episode, will not have the video in it because YouTube copyright. So mix and match those various video formats as you see fit to get the content that you want. And if you want to sync up your own copy of Owari Monogatari episodes 3 and 4 with the timer-based version up on YouTube, you can totally do that. Just get it ready because there will be a beep beep timer that will count up to zero and that's where we'll start the episode. So if you want to hit the button, that's when you want to hit the button. Uh, yeah, that beep beep timer is coming at you right now. Let's do it. Right. Right. Wow, that was so Zetsubo Sen- Well, this is also Zetsubo Sensei? Doesn't hurt that he's also Itoshiki Sensei. Back to this room. Two years and five... 
so to early middle school. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> all right. Just ignore... All right, I'm definitely not going to ignore Oshino. <laughs> but, okay. So we've got... Uh, what are these things called? Hypercubes. And that was all Mobius stuff. So we've got non-Euclidean space. And a reflection. And... It's not hex. It's not binary either. The fuck is this? Okay. <laughs> Super non Euclidean. <laughs> Jesus. This is gorgeous. Equals. The answer is okay. Oh boy. Middle school front gates. So a different... Okay. Guess we're not ignoring Ogi. Uh-huh. Hoo-hoo-hoo. <laughs> Please. Oh. I thought that was a request. I'm stupid. Yeah. Gonna just put that in big ol' air quotes. Quink a dink. What would they find in a shoe locker? Oh. Labyrinth. Notes? Flashback. Okay. Sure. Okay, back here. <laughs> ha ha ha. <laughs> I don't think you can brush that off, buddy. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I was white. Significant interest. Well, he's a vampire. He's got a girlfriend. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm. It's a tall order.
totally nonchalant. Totally inconspicuous. I fucking remember. <laughs> oh. Oh. There is so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice try. Uh-huh. And it's all your fault. Oh, shit. <laughs> Dig deeper, digging deeper, digging deeper. <laughs> Wow. That little bit of cry in there. Not as good. Maybe someone you can't or shouldn't save. That's a lot of strong emotion. Part of her just flew out of her. That is a lot of strong emotion. Like, easily enough to create an aberration. That's an interesting... Wow. That's very Senjo. Whoa, that color. Ow.
Uh oh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh huh. Uh oh. Mm hmm. Without my help, what you did for me. Beneath you. This music. Yeah. <laughs> Nice, Sergio. <laughs> I'll be passing out now? Wait, what? Okay, impossible spaces. I don't know what to believe. So we're playing, what is it, The Price is Right? A riddle. Quiz! Three doors. I just got a weird, yeah. Ah, oh, shit. I, I don't remember. You always want to switch, I think. Yeah, you, you always want to switch. Because it becomes a 50-50 instead of a You think it's the same regardless, but no, you want to switch. Yes. No. No. It's now one and two if you switch, I think. Ah, it's all weird. Right. It's counterintuitive. And it will be also empty. Oh.
啊啊！那得可拉克奥基哥基拜拜。Excuse me. Oh, those are bars, not hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unless you just disappear. Maybe. I don't think it'll happen, though. Justice. Oh. Squishy. Ah, sorry, just the knock knees and the, 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 <sighs> nope. So she had already figured out the answer. That runs deeper. I have to assume it's her unrequited love. Which means she had already hated you. She said that everything he has he owes to mathematics. Yeah, I don't buy that you ever had them, frankly, but okay. Yeah, shattered reflection. Hmm. <laughs> indeed, indeed. A little bit.
feel like we're going to have to find out next episode because it feels like we're wrapping. Nope. Guess not. How far in are we? Okay. Relatively close. Time for one more discovery, probably. Mm hmm Clock like back to golden spirals. Mm. Okay. Okay. Is this the same ED music? I believe this is. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Well, I got I got a got a whole page of notes here that uh I, I don't know what to make heads or tails of. Um phew. There's so much that we don't know at this point. And having been like not burned, but but having been entirely mistaken at the midpoint of the last arc when I was like, "Oh, it's super obvious. It's just the, like that's the answer, right?" No. <laughs> nope. That was the answer. Um Hmm. Hmm. Ah, oh, geez. You know, like maybe, maybe there's enough here to come up with with some kind of conjecture as to what what's really going on. Um, I'm gonna stick with my idea that there's some sort of spurned love element here, but there's certainly something more to it as well. The fact that that Sinjogahara and and uh, and Oikura both pass out means that that Aragi has to explore this on his own without actually like being able to just ask them what the problem is or what the the history is. He has to find out on his own, which is interesting and a a cool way to set up the story. Okay, let's let's just go through all the things that I saw fit to write down. So I've got uh, five years ago, uh, I wrote down not hate back. Uh, ignore Ogi, which seems like like the the strangest statement. Uh, Oshino Ogi can be ignored. Like one, hell no, I'm not ignoring Ogi at any point. Uh, cause she scares me. Um, and then we've got down hypercube reflection numbers text. So this is all the stuff for the OP. Uh, I think the most interesting thing about that the the use of 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 hypercubes 
non-Euclidean geometry reflections and uh, just like crazy warping space. These these um, donuts. What are they actually called? A donut shape in math. I don't know. A donut shape math. Taurus. Yeah, it's a Taurus. And then, is there a Mobius Taurus? There is, but it's really weird. A uh, Klein bottle. That's what it is. When you take two Mobius strips and mishmash them, yeah, they become they become a weird. Yeah. Okay. But we didn't actually see anything quite like that. We just see see donuts growing out. An immensely visually interesting uh, OP here. But I don't know what to read into it, if anything. And then I think the most interesting thing about this OP... Well, we've got, we've got the fact that all of the, the text has been decided to be reflected. Whether that's just a typesetting thing or... Or, uh, and, and just, like, the typesetter's trying to make the text... No, you know what? All of the, the titles are... Uh, all of the, the credits that are in here are also reflected. So I'm going to say that that was a solid choice by the, the translators to typeset that way. What these flamey things are on top of Araragi, I do not know. That was her in the buff. Really cool, visually interesting OP. Um... And then the fact that there are reflections speak to two sides of everything, two sides of every story, that kind of that kind of through line of thought. But it's not strong enough to like to be worth mentioning, I don't think. The the numbers here are extremely strange. I, I would have guessed, like, binary or hex, but it's neither binary nor hex. And when it comes to, like, turning numbers into... into te they, they seem to be associated with the, the, the lines of dialogue, the speech, or the, the song. Everything being math. But what kind of code this is, I do not know. Not off the top of my head. Some really weird stuff. Almost creating a, a face here <laughs> out of his ears. It's oh, super unique. Very cool opening. Very cool opening. Um, I wrote down hate back. There was a line, yeah. Prove that Aragi Koyomi cannot hate Oikura Sodachi even though she hates him. But to do that, you need to understand why she hates you. Kind of. We'll see. Okay, and then after that, we've got coincidence in hefty, hefty quotes. Uh, it's a coincidence. It's not, but okay, we'll, we'll take it as though it is. Jumbled memories and therefore the potential of, of unreliability and uh, uh, a chronological... What would be the itty of that? An achronological nature to the story. We'll go with that. Um, significant interest in Araragi, yes. And then we go into a part where we, we need to go through again, uh, which is the first meeting, not here. This is very interesting. The lockers, the fact that Sengoku's locker is here as well is intriguing, but don't know what to think about it. The the color design, just in general, in these conversations is pretty awesome, especially when we do swaps, like so. Um, and then again, like so. And then we do a third one where her hair is white, like so. Yeah, a little bit uh, leaning into the, 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 the white-haired color scheme, which is kind of cool. Uh, yeah. Oh, and then at the very beginning, was it at the very beginning? It was. Here, uh, this is totally shaft- like a hundred percent shaft doing doing self reference. Uh when we get these these eye blinks and then the look to the side, look to the side, I wouldn't wouldn't have picked up on this otherwise, 
if I, if I weren't watching it right now, um, I don't know where it was actually. Okay. Right here at the very beginning. She looks up. They're standing on pedestals away from each other. He blinks, looks this way, looks this way. That's, uh, super Zetsuboshita, uh, Itoshiki sensei doing that. So that's kind of, kind of shaft messing with themselves, which is pretty cool. Okay. 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 Title card. We get here. But the part that I first want to start with really is, uh, Aragi entering the room. Because this is where shit gets interesting. We come in and it is stark blue, super contrasty, but also grayed out. Uh he I love the way they demonstrate his his awkward uh pretending not to know that she's there and just like to notice for the first time and just be totally friendly and super obvious about it. <laughs> huh? Do my eyes deceive me? Could it be? <laughs> and she speaks for the first time. And that is where I just have to wonder, like, how many, how many takes? How many takes for that line? Because instantly, this whole, like, goofy sort of tiptoeing over and like, oh, just get smashed by that one little bit of a line not even the content of the line just the way she says it is amazing oh. <gasps> yeah gulp step back and then the way she says his line his name <laughs> venomous uh which reminds me significantly of kyoko quite a bit quite 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 a bit um yeah these these introductory lines from oikura are just dripping with like years of resentment and do so much for her character I also, I love the way that the entirety of the room is sort of pushed back and away from her, leaving her alone, sitting there against the window. Smooth sailing, huh? Everything, he can say nothing right in this situation. She absolutely has it out for him. But then she gets to the reasoning for that, the why. Why does she hate him so? And the answer is not as simple as he thinks. It doesn't have to do with the class meeting. It has to do with something before that, long before that. And that's the mystery that we're trying to solve more than anything, right? Is why does Oikura Sodachi hate Araragi Koyomi? I hate people who don't understand why they're happy. I hate that your justice is self-centered. I hate people, a lot of what she says is along the lines of like the, the no man is an island um, idiom. Like you can't, you can't be happy without others, which is an interesting sort of perpendicular line of thought. Or even you could say it's a reflection of the thought that uh, uh, Aragi started this whole story with. The not needing friends because they drag you down. It's sort of the polar opposite. Kind of. But I'm not certain. And then the other question that I have to that I have to pose is like she's unaware of how his outlook on the world has changed in the two years that she hasn't seen him. Uh she's aware to some extent of certain things that he's done, gotten a girlfriend and certain other things, but is unaware of the changes that he's gone through. Whether that would change her opinion of him, whether she's able to be swayed at all on her opinion of him, and whether that's desired, I don't know. She brings this back up again, as though it's a, a focal point of her, her resentment still, which is an odd one. Math is my last straw. And then this line, it's thanks to mathematics that you got a girlfriend. That stands out to me as, as ringing true. Um, 
when taken in context with some of the things that she says to Senjogahara, things that imply that she did something for Senjogahara, which somehow led to their relationship. Um, I don't know what that could be, but it seems to me as though Oikura is taking credit for their relationship to some extent. I'm not sure, again, not sure how or how that makes sense, but that's how it seems to read. I don't know. Um, yeah, people like you make me so upset. I love these close-ups on the mouth to really emphasize it. And then uh, there's also, I think they do the, the like proximity effect filter that they use. No, I don't think so. I can never hate you enough. And then uh, uh, Chekhov's pencil. Try as I might discuss, keeps welling up. People like you. It's not so much that it's a bit extreme, it's that I don't necessarily believe that she knows who Araragi is. You compromise all the time. You want the status quo. You were the same bat. And then she stops and begins coughing. And he reaches out to attempt to to help or comfort her, and she brushes him off. I don't want to be pitied by you. It does me no good. Really hate happy people, and she contradicts this, says, no, I love happy people. What I hate are people who don't understand why they're happy. Water that boils. Hmm. The ones who don't try to understand. The water that thinks it boils without assistance. And then at this moment, her, her, like her Genga floats away from her with her rage. This is super cool. I've never seen anything quite like this. Except, maybe in certain ending scenes of Evangelion, there are things that are sort of like this. But I don't think I've ever seen anything like this, where she literally shouts the the keyframe off of herself. It's kind of amazing. So I, I also wonder whether her strength of emotion is, is enough to produce an aberration and whether that's even relevant to this story. It doesn't seem to be so far. There doesn't seem to be any aberration at play. It just seems to be very, very focused, intent, dislike of Araragi for reasons that he and therefore we do not quite understand at present that will most likely be revealed as we move along and explore their history together. I'm still sticking with the, the general like 25% chance theory that it's some kind of unrequited love, but I don't know. Just just as a, a guess in general, that's a, a pretty safe assumption for Monogatari, I think, is that the character somehow uh, is interested in Araragi or was and feels spurned by that. Don't know. It's because people like you crowd this world. People th think they can survive without help. And this is the, the sort of stuff that, that makes me think that she may be still running off of assumptions of who Araragi is that are not presently true which makes it very difficult to to reason with her or because he would have to prove that he doesn't that he's not the same person anymore unless i don't know it's so it's it's so vague and nebulous at the moment or i'm just not picking up on the critical details because i don't realize that they're critical uncertain okay moving along i uh, don't understand that so much that i could die this line I remember being really impactful from the voice actors. Also, shout outs to the music selection here with the 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 quick violin uh I don't know what that's called. The the bowing and then this this like almost burbly bassy sound that's being used. It's like boom, boom, boom. It's almost like a like a an alarm siren, but way pitched down. To tears of despair unknown and then yeah he tries to to be like i'm with you on this and she's like that's bullshit there is no one more thankless than you where that comes from i do not know and then she pushes him toward the locker 
no idea what makes you who you are, begins to rise up with mm, animation power. And then he asks, yeah, you don't know what makes you who you are, and that's one of the things. What do you mean? I hate meaning. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if this has any any meta level uh implications. Like from my perspective, Oisin loves to talk through his characters about the work itself, and having having a character who is the focus of an arc yell at the main character, our point of view character, the audience insert character, I hate meaning, I hate trying to find deeper meaning in the thing, uh, reads to me like potentially Oisin saying like, hey, don't look for super deep meaning in this arc. But also... Oisin loves to insert lots of super deep meaning in all of his arcs. So, <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. Put that one at like a 10% chance of being anywhere near the, the, the accurate interpretation. Okay, and then at this point, or close to it, Senjogahara enters. Right, it's right after she stabs. Grabs for stationary, a pencil. Stabs, ra 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 This color swap in particular... This one, amazing. Just like that is freaking gorgeous. Uh, it's it's almost inverted, like a like a photo negative. This one, however, is style, style, style. I love the contrast of this purple and this blue. It's actually almost Senjogahara colors, um, and then that with the sort of greenish, slightly different color around the outside of his eye, the yellow used for his face. And the, again, a different purple for the iris itself. This is really striking. Also, just the fact that, that the color swap occurs when the pencil lands. Pencil lands, and then we sort of... Actually, I want to frame by frame that. Hold on. Pencil lands, frame by frame. Because there's something weird. Okay, so we flash to red. That's what I was missing. We flash to red, and then we shaky... Brrr. Settle and her twin tails go up, and then we head to Aragi, who reacts. Really cool. Covers the mark. Pencil clatters to the ground, and she's taken aback by her own action. And then, oh boy. Uh, we don't know whether or whether she hadn't, whether she had already gone to the staff room or whether she hadn't. And either way, she had met the newly arrived Senjo Gahara. Okay, and was trying to hold her back. Told her that Oikura had come to school, and she had rushed to the classroom in short order, as though she knows the story, which we have no reason to believe that she would. All of this leading me to think that the conversation that 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 Senjo Gahara now has with with her, also the way that she drags Hanakawa around, is kind of kind of hilarious. Senjo Gahara-san, recognition. I get it, you're Aragi's girlfriend, yes. Hanakawa, it's fine, it's no big deal. You don't care about what I have to say. Here, you don't care what I have to say. Question, you've got gall for some sickly girl who couldn't do anything without my help. I mean, this isn't even implied, this is just text. Oikura helped Senjo Gahara somehow in the past, something that we have no information about at this point. And at this, at, at the point of helping her, uh, Sanjo Gahara was beneath her. And then Sanjo Gahara confirms by saying something, something, what you did for me. I guess I do owe you thanks for what you did for me. And all of this has to do most likely with with math. I don't know where I wrote that down. Uh, yeah, yeah. I wrote down math leading to girlfriend. Like, mathematics is the reason that you got a girlfriend in the first place. So, 
again, get the feeling that Oikura somehow unknowingly, maybe knowingly, I don't know, uh, somehow caused their relationship to occur. But we don't know what it was. And because we knock out both characters in short order... Card frame your illness. Smack. What else is on this frame? 15 damage. <laughs> Just takes it like a champ. And uh, now you fucked up. I like how it tries to stop her. Wait, how much damage? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that was a crit. <laughs> that was a crit. Ow. So yeah, watch out for barbarians with retaliatory attack. Don't don't hit them. <laughs> don't don't do that. Boom! Knocked out, unconscious. Make your death saving throws. Okay. Slides across the floor and she's out. Then we get a little bit goofy with it. Uh, and then since Yokohara has the wherewithal to like state, I'm about to pass out too now. I'll be passing out now, too. Bye-bye. The rest is in your hands. Okay, and back here we go. Also, I love the, the shifting the shifting patterns, kind of like LED tiles uh, on the lockers. Super interesting. Uh, okay, and then we go into a bunch of impossible spaces, which are... Who was it that drew impossible? Uh, artist, impossible geometry... Escher, that's I, I was thinking Euler for reasons, but but uh, some Escher esque drawings. Yeah, this is the the one that flows around, but it's impossible because the water is all flowing downhill. And then there's this one, which is all warpified, and there was another one with the impossible staircases, recognizable things. Okay, and then we get the ABC notes. Do they have different? No, they're the same little brackets, which are quotation marks. Nothing in the envelope will you change your selection. So, here, yeah, Monty Hall problem, it's always better to switch because of a weird thing with probability. Once you eliminate one of the options, you get a one in two choice. Um, so it becomes 50-50 instead of 33.33 repeating. Uh, so you always want to switch, even though it's counterintuitive and weird. We do see Nautico's locker, seemingly for no reason. Parents of Justice. <laughs> Ogie Gogi, bye bye. Right. Ogie just dis a fucking peers here. Yeah, right here. And she's gone. And then she's standing there by the locker. Timeline-wise, this isn't when she, she does some work on Nautico, is it? I don't think so. We see this. But timeline-wise, that doesn't line up. Does it? I don't know. I don't know if that lines up. Maybe it does. Okay, back to these lines. Hmm. And then we enter this sort of awful, mm, desaturated grayscape. Which is very flashbacky. Actually, the imagery here reminds me more than anything else of uh, of Miki's garden in Utena. I, I wonder if they drew from that imagery in any way, intentionally. I don't think so, but that's what it reminds me of. Which is simultaneously like an opulent but dilapidated place, and also a memory and a flashback, as though they're traversing through and into a memory here as they pass through this gate. Uh. fit to look at to the elements this moment is very strange because it it does appear as though he has like a, a legless hair <laughs> you know <sighs> but not what we're going for here at all just bars of the gate so there's no nameplate owner must have changed is there anything on the the sign momiji real estate nothing that i could think of one two three four five six seven okay placeholder uh the fact that ogi just shatters this door pretty cool 
pretty cool. Lock us out of here, and then we talk about justice a little bit. My parents would want any wrongdoing punished. And then she mentions that that could be traumatic. Interesting. Presumably hates you because of that. Doubt it. It's much older than that. Knew who the culprit was this whole time, right? And they switch. Class meeting is connected to her change of personality, but not directly to her hatred for me. Yeah, that's much older. And there she is outside of the gates. Walking away. And then we get into some strange reflections. Um, so we have we have some shattered reflections of Araragi for sure. And then Oyi herself into a, a cracked reflection as she says, It almost feels like I came to be very recently. I have no real memories of my elementary or middle school. Oh, that's interesting, Ogi. Hmm, yeah, that's totally normal, and uh, you're definitely a normal human being person that has nothing strange about them at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. But she does have reflections, which is interesting. Now here, this is this is a strange, impossible reflection, uh, because... We clearly see Aragi standing here at that mirror facing toward us. There is no other mirror reflected here. So how in the reflections do we see his face? We should only see the, the side of him that's facing away from the mirror, right? And there should be no repetition here. So this is getting odd. This is getting odd. Also, there are parts of that bookshelf that shouldn't be standing upright. I don't like where we are right now. I don't I don't like this place. Which is perfect. It puts me puts me ill at ease. How odd, how terrifying. One must first understand the enemy's sense of justice. What does she believe is just? What does she believe in? And then we focus on this table. And all these strange objects that are in here. Spirals, telescopes, and we begin the story. A story of what uh, what made Aragi Koyomi who he is. Okay, then. Okay, then. Got a lot of stuff there. I have no idea what any of it means. I do have a feeling that a lot of it will click into place after this next episode, but we're going to have to jump into the next one to find out. In any case, I'm going to take a quick break, uh, wrap up this episode, take a quick break, run a, a sync thing to make sure that all the tracks get synced up so that we get best viewing experience possible, and uh, then we will be ready to jump on into episode four of Oari Monogatari. So I'll see you in just a moment, and we'll be ready to go. All right, we are back, we are synced up, and we are ready to go for episode four. Uh, let me... Ugh. A lot of, well, notes and scribbles and stuff on here. Uh, so I'm going to put that right under there and there. Okay, just put it in reach-ish and uh, ready to go. So uh, I've got the episode up and ready. I switched the subs to Cold Girls. So we're solid, we're good to go. Uh, if you're syncing up with the timer-based version, get your copy of episode 4 ready because the beep-beep timer is coming your way. I'm... I'm an idiot. I unplugged my headphones. <laughs> okay. And let's... Let's do that again, shall we? Uh... Turning the page. Five years ago. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Justice.
like his sisters. Okay. And this folds into I'm gonna pay attention to the lyrics this time. Always known that words are lies. Whispering to Araragi. Mathematics. I derived. The answer was you. Okay. Return journey. Hello. Must have solved the puzzle in the letter then. Soka. Okay, let's do a formal formal solution. Use of cards or speech. Absolutely. So everything is owed to that store to that summer. Me too. So now we hear it. Hmm, a genuine desire to share her love for mathematics. Okay. Plus 5% to the she was in love with him theory. Always obscured. Always obscuring her. Hmm. In the chaos? T 
to in secret third. Whoa. Or someone with a terrible home life. <laughs> peace, peace. Did you break condition three? Hmm. Very much like a fairy. That's sad. So he starts to break condition three. Vanished. Turned away. Solid, not vague. Wow. Wow. Was it, though? Right. chose to forget. Very much like choosing to forget the, the meeting. That was what I was thinking.
Because that's not what happened. Maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Super out of place. Condition three. Apologies that don't understand what they're apologizing for. Indeed. Don't know anything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Back to that. Very familiar. Mm. Justice. It all comes to condition three. Clock going backward. Despite demanding no compensation. Okay. Already in the trap. Relatively. Please, Ogi.
I'm going to draw another arrow pointing toward condition three. Kaleidoscope. Hmm. Why you couldn't find her? Oh, that's striking. Ow. That is correct. Seems that way. No. <laughs> Nope, I'm okay with that. No, like, I'm okay without that. Thanks, but no. Again, evening the score. One more segment. You also never would have gotten involved in the well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, how would she know that? Oh, nice, Hanakawa. And you had no previous... Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Framing.
endlessly. <laughs> wow. So now you must confront. Ooh, Schrodinger-esque? Them as children, her waiting for him. CD keeps gaining meaning. <laughs> kind of amazing. Okay. 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 The fabric of my identity. Wow. I know nothing, you know everything. Compensation despite demanding none. Not a ruin, but her house. Only a ruin in your mind and a way to remember it. I will love you to even the score. And then there is some other connection, another door to open. What does Ogi gain from exploring these mysteries with Araragi? The answer has to be balance in some way. Equi equivalence in some way. But it's still unclear. The answer was you. Mm, the use of the cards for her speech during the child scenes until they stop being that way. Before we met in the chaos, and then the three conditions. We meet here. It remains secret, and you do not ask about me. You do not pry into my personal life. You do not do any of this. It's really hard to figure out unless, unless Oikura knows, knew at this point, uh, a lot more about Araragi. A lot more. If she knew his character, who he was, then she might realize that telling him not to ask about me, like, don't ask about me, don't pry into my personal life, is a great way to get him to do exactly that. But she has no reason to believe that, unless someone or something informed her in middle school of that, along with the fact that his parents are policemen. How did she know that? It's what Hanakawa brings up at the end. And it strongly... I mean, it doesn't even strongly imply that. It, it makes me think that Ogi was somehow present and active at that point. But then that contradicts Ogi's statement that she feels like she's come to, come to being recently. 
That is a confusing next mystery. Okay, so this feels like a wrap for this particular mystery. Um, and a, a, a less, a less mm, discussion-inspiring episode than the, the first one, than episode three. But there's still plenty of interesting stuff here. So let's go ahead and skim. Also, I before we do, I just want to mention that like the ability of this piece of media to hide hide the answer that you're not expecting in plain sight is just so insane because it I never get it when it's in, initially like laid out in front of me. Everything er, everything for this arc was laid out in in the very beginning here. The the disappointment in his results on the exam, source of embarrassment, and then the fact that his his parents are policemen are all there. You could put it together, but there's no way you would. Okay, and then we open here, and we use we use cards for all of her dialogue up until the point they actually start working together, which produces this like this palpable sense of distance and like, uh oddness to the whole situation and then once we do hear her speaking we never show her eyes her eyes become just like do not show up and when we see the scenes of them sitting together she is always obscured by something in the foreground there's always something over her head and face this pillar this thing and then the fact that she's always waiting there it's always super obvious. It should have been super obvious that this was her house, but it's not. And when we see it, it's not even in ruins. But there is... We don't even see broken glass, do we? Broken windows. And the whole thing does make her out to be some sort of a math fairy who wants nothing in return. But of course, she wants something in return. This image of, of Yotsuki as a, a magical girl fairy is amazing. Okay, those three were the only th things that she demanded. So we meet here. You don't talk about this to anyone. Keep it a secret. And you don't ask her pry in about me. The third one being the one that she desires. Also, I wonder if these three are intended to be like a... Nah, that doesn't make any sense. I was going to say a parallel to the Monty Hall problem, but it doesn't make any sense. I brought candy one day, and she wants. No she doesn't want candy. I'm not looking for conversation. I'm just happy to teach you math. Please stay in love with math. Hmm. And then this angle, as though this is just the way he remembers it. And I wonder if that's actually what happened. I don't know. So he returns and she is gone. And there is one envelope left, an empty envelope, a statement that you missed the mark. These scenes are reminiscent of the, the Nautico Medusa scenes. That's why he didn't go back, but he never forgot about the math. And so in a sense, he does owe her everything but in a weird sense. You could find enjoyment in numbers. Certainly would have had nothing once justice was destroyed. Once his sense of justice was destroyed by the meeting. So it was only the math that kept him, that pushed him through. Huh. God, Ogie's fucking creepy. <laughs> I hate people who don't realize that they're happy. All of that rage. Despite all my rage. Wait, that I was way off key there. All right, whatever. Still just a rat in a cage. Uh huh. Uh huh. All she had to do was remind me of it, but she doesn't want to remember it too. I remember it either. Yeah, 
and then we we use this uh sort of uh what would you what would you call this style wise style wise actually you know what i would call it i would call it identical to the style of fucking nautico's manga in fact i'll bet you anything that the intent here is that this is nautico working as a mangaka creating the triteness of this story <laughs> Oh, that's clever. Even if it's not, that's my headcanon now. Absolutely. Because the style matches. Minus the coloration. But the, the whole... Yeah, that girl with me. Oh, you're awful. Oh, 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 but it's still super cute. Fucking groan-inducing. <laughs> Just like Nautico's manga. Alright, and then we go sort of monochromatic here. A little bit of shimbo. Yeah. When you're dealing with somebody whose who's hatred of you stems from your not understanding of why you are the way that you are, then you don't want to apologize without understanding exactly what you're apologizing for. Hmm. Okay. And then... I know nothing. You know everything. Someone in the comments of the last episode. We're going to do a, 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 an out-of-place comments comment spotlight really quick. Uh, for Jacob, Jacob Krauchik. Uh, I'm sorry, dude. I, I don't know how to pronounce the last, like, multiple uh, uh, consonants together of your name, but let me take a screenshot of that so I can insert it into the video. Boop. Choop. So, shoutouts to Jacob for writing on the previous episode. Uh... I don't know anything, and you know everything. Something that's been explored before in Monogatari is the idea of looking away from something and pretending not to notice it. Pretending not to see it or know it or remember it. This here is the extreme of that. Aragi knew it all from the very beginning, he just didn't want to think about it. And that look Ogi gives him after he admonishes the teacher. Awari Hype, you've now entered what I think is my favorite stretch in all of Monogatari. It's a hard call, but I have a lot of reasons to love this and the ensuing couple of arcs. There is so much setup and so much payoff, every bit of it as fascinating as the last. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Well, Jacob, so far I do, and thank you for that statement, because it is kind of becoming increasingly relevant as we move along, this idea of looking away from something and pretending not to notice it, or uh, attempting to intentionally forget the things that are vague and it's something that was mentioned explicitly in the beginning of this episode i don't remember where but i do know that it was mentioned because i wrote it down i think it was in aragi's opening monologue um that we forget the the vague and nebulous things the things that maybe don't have a clear-cut answer uh which seems extremely relevant here yeah hmm hmm the victim, domestic violence. And even there, he thinks about it and thinks about it, and very much like like us or like me. I mean, if you figured it out at this point, then nice. But uh, I didn't. Not really. Why she had tr entrapped him? I didn't really figure it out. But then it's pieced together. They're similarly run down. How is that possible? Because it was not a ruin. Because it was just a terrible place it was her home she was living in this terrible place and hoping that you exposed to it would work to solve it and then she looks through a kaleidoscope that constantly shifts and changes extraordinary circumstances classic hormonogatory the trauma that you didn't understand We can regard the investigation as largely concluded. He will be given time to make a closing statement. And he does so. I still love math. Still take solace in numbers. Very interesting. And then there's the line that I will love you to even the score. I don't exactly know where it is. That's fine. We don't that's Oh, there it is. I started hating myself a little for my happiness. And she says, then I will love you to even the score. The only thing so far in these two episodes that is explicitly like in line with the stuff from before that I'm trying to think about, which is Ogi as balancing. Uh, 
but it doesn't really add much to it. Not that I can determine, at least. So then we meet up with, with Hanakawa, and Hanakawa sheds a little, a little bit of, uh, throws a little bit of shade, I think, toward Ogi, whether she knows it or not. Because there's a little bit of an element here to the story that doesn't quite line up and could be the start of the suspicion, hopefully, maybe, possibly, I don't know. There's also the, the scenes where Ogi disappears, where she just evaporates from, from the camera, uh, and then we see Sengoku's locker. Really weird. No idea what to think about those. Unless, no, she could, I, I was going to say she put this, unless you put the snake in Sengoku's locker, but there was no snake in, in, in Nautico's locker. Because it was just a, a fabrication. Hmm. Okay. Okay. perfectly plausible that she somehow found out all of these things but how did she find out that your parents yeah by some so oh by some sort of coincidence back again to the big old quotes around the coincidence from the, the previous episode hmm. interesting so there must have been some other connection a door that Aragi still has to open, and likely something that he will be able to remember, something that he experienced that would lead to some sort of answer. But at the moment, the door is still closed, and we can only hear laughing through it. Subtle reference to the, the lines of the ED, I believe. Hmm. <coughs> okay. Weird arc, a lot less self-contained than the first one. The first one being like a self-contained arc that also serves to introduce us to Oikura. And then this one feeling as though it's like a midpoint uh, that delves into the previous relationship with Oikura and starts to bring up some answers. And then I'm thinking the next one being opening the door and finding some sort of balance in the situation between the two of them that will work moving forward if they have to interact with each other in the future as classmates. There's something else. Okay. Yeah, a little bit less self-contained because it, it, it stems from the previous episode and leads into the next. Hmm. But fascinating pair of episodes. Definitely. Very interesting. Some cool visuals. I don't I don't think the, 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 the visuals and such were quite as cool as the, the first two. The first two were really striking in a lot of ways. Though they had some moments. The moment where we see Oikura with uh irisless and pupilless white eyes uh, just staring blankly, literally out into space. That was a striking moment, and there were plenty of striking moments. I can't say I loved this particular section of Awari as much as the first two episodes, but that's fine. This was still fantastic. I do think that I'm about out of things to say about it, so in the interest of not blathering on or wasting too much time, I'm going to choose to wrap it up here. Therefore, let's do that. I've been Tiabu. This has been Awari, episodes 3 and 4. I hope you've enjoyed them as much as I have, and I hope to catch you next week in the next however many the next arc is. We'll see. It's, it's probably either two or three. In any case, that's what we'll be watching next week, so I hope to see you there. Peace.